Now, today we see God the Son paid for the church. And first we have here, He redeemed us through His blood. Let me read verse 7. "...in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace." Now, these verses here are actually like mountain peaks. We've just been leaping from one to the other. And I keep thinking, well, we're going to come to one where we can just touch down and then take off again. But it's not quite like that. This is so important and so vital for us today. Now, we are told here we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sin. This is very important for us to see. He's redeemed us through His blood. Now we move from eternity into time. Back in eternity past, God chose, God predestinated, made us accepted in the Beloved. Now we come out of eternity into time where the plans of God the Father are now placed in the hands of Christ who moves into space and time to construct the church. And now it is a historical fact that Jesus was born into this world 1,900 years ago. God intruded into humanity. And there, after being in this earth for 33 years, he died upon a cross, buried, rose again bodily, ascended into heaven. Those are the historical facts that the Word of God give us. And while He was here, He redeemed us. And He redeemed us through His blood. Now, this is something that's not popular today. The thing that most people like is a beautiful religion, one that appeals to their aesthetic nature. The cross of Christ does not appeal to the aesthetic part of man. doesn't appeal to the pride of man. And unfortunately today that, well, of course, all the liberal churches, but even a few of the so-called Bible churches today make an appeal to the old nature, to man. And therefore, there is no emphasis on the blood of Christ. It's rather repulsive. A lady went up years ago to the late Dr. G. Campbell Morgan. I'm told it was up in Philadelphia. And she was one of these dowagers that had a lorgnette. You know what a lorgnette is. It's a snare on the end of a stick. And she went up with that lorgnette and said to him, Dr. Morgan, I do not like to hear about the blood. It's repulsive to me. It offends my aesthetic nature. And Dr. Morgan looked at her in his characteristic manner, and he says, I agree with you that it's repulsive. But he says, the only thing repulsive about it is your sin and mine. That's the thing that's repulsive about the blood redemption and the forgiveness of sins, my friend. And then I'm told years ago that when a new pastor came to the great church in Washington, D.C., that a couple came down to him and said, we trust that you are not going to put too much emphasis on the blood. The last pastor we had, he just talked about the blood all the time, and we hope that you will not emphasize it too much. Oh, he looked at him and says, you can be assured. I won't emphasize it too much. And they said, look pleased and thanked him for it. He says, but just a minute. He says, you know, you can't emphasize it too much. And he continued to emphasize the blood. Well, it's repulsive to man. We have redemption through his blood. Now, the writer to the Hebrews puts it like this. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book it's written of me to do thy will, O God, Above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings, offering for sin thou wouldst not, neither hadst pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. 
Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, he sat down on the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. Now you see, God drew the blueprint for the church. And the Son, he comes into time to form the church with nail-pierced hands. And the entire context of the Old Testament sets forth the expiation of sins by the blood of an animal sacrifice. Yet this, as the writer to the Hebrews says here, could not take away sins. Only Christ could execute that. That's what Paul means in whom, that is, in Christ, we have our redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sin, according to the riches of his grace. Now, this is the one who's called the Beloved, accepted in the Beloved, that's Christ, and in whom we have redemption. Now, redemption is the primary work of Christ. Actually, the word is here, the redemption. In whom we have the redemption is the literal. And that gives prominence and position of the fact that it's named first. It's given top priority. That's what Christ did for us when he came to this earth. He made it that way. He said that. Matthew 20, 28 even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Now, he came to pay a price for your redemption and mine. We were slaves in sin, and he came to pay a price to deliver us, to give us liberty. 